Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, practice or practice questions uh, pertaining, in this case, to the direction of the impulse. Uh, so hopefully you took a look at that teaching video that we supplied you or that we gave you earlier, uh, the teaching video on polarization, depolarization, and repolarization. It's quite lengthy, but again, a uh, very abstract concept, so we thought it'd be a good idea to do kind of a unfortunately a longer video but if you did see that this kind of directly leads this practice question leads uh, directly into that information we presented in that uh, teaching video so again with these type of diploma questions very difficult questions higher level questions anytime there's a diagram on there it ups it to that level uh, on that level of hierarchy on difficulty so uh, this definitely does have a diagram in here so let's kind of go through some of the processes and some of the strategies that you want to incorporate when you're going through these type of questions. Uh, first of all, we've talked about this before, but we said uh, take a look right at the top before you even get into the diagram or the graph or whatever it is. Uh, take a look at this information up here and it says use the following information to answer the next two questions. So that's important because this diagram is relevant for both those questions that are going to be coming up here. Uh, when you get a diagram, take your time. I know people are stressed because they want to get to the actual answer right away and they feel like they're going to run out of time. But it is, I mean, there's not a lot of these questions on your final or on the midterm. So you want to make sure that they count. So take the time to interpret what that diagram is talking about. So some key things here. Make some notes right all over your question. This is talking about a neuron and we recognize this as a neuron. We can see again the dendrites, the axon, the cell body, the axon terminals, but uh, look at some of the information. They're giving you some navigational points here. So they're saying that on this end, we have a receptor. And this is taking messages. Then they're telling you this is uh, more key information. They're actually showing you the direction of the impulse. In this case, the impulse is going from left to right. And that impulse is being carried and here is another landmark that we want to pay attention to, the spinal cord. So, of course, the spinal cord being part of the CNS, the central nervous system. Okay? So, uh, then they actually show you a portion of the axon that they then blow up. And they blow it up and they number it 1, 2, and 3. And you can see right here they're showing some of the positives on the inside and then 3 and 1 uh, on adjacent sides there. Okay, so take your time when you get these type of diagrams, take a look at all these different features because they're, and all these different landmarks in that uh, because they are going to help uh, you know, set the foundation for the question that's gonna come. So when we take a look at the question here, it says this uh, neuron transmits an impulse from the receptor to the CNS, the central nervous system. Therefore, uh, it is, and what they're asking you is the type of neuron this is. So we know really quickly when you get to these type of questions, don't be afraid to do just on the side of your piece of paper a quick little flow chart. So we did a quick little flow chart of the three different type of neurons. And the three ones that we talked about were sensory. And then, of course, we said the interneuron. And then the last one being the motor neuron. Okay? And really quickly, make some brief notes. And a lot of times, taking that extra effort will unlock all this information that is uh, somewhere in your brain, hopefully. So sensory, that's taking messages or impulses from the sensory, uh, the sensory receptors. And it's taking them to the CNS. Uh, the interneurons are found in the central nervous system. They coordinate and they determine what type of response they're going to send out. And then the motor neuron will take messages or impulses from the sensory or this uh, central nervous system to the effectors. In this case, uh, being often a muscle. Okay, so those really quickly are the three different type of neurons. So go back to this question, very easy now. It's saying it's taking an impulse from the receptor to the central nervous system. We can see that right in our little note that we made on the side. So of course the answer in this case would have to be B. So just a couple of things just to reiterate when you're going through these type of questions. 
Make sure you take a look at the diagram and look at all the key information that they're presenting. The receptor, the direction of the impulse in this case. Sending that message to the spinal cord, which is part of the CNS. Don't be afraid to make a bunch of notes. Uh, and then the second part of this, write out a little flow chart. If you don't come up with the answer immediately, do a little bit of flow chart just pertaining to the, in this case, the types of uh, the three different type of neurons, and then that hopefully will unlock the key information there. Let's just take a look at the second part of this question. So the second part of this question is a numerical response question. So these numerical response questions, we've talked about them before, but they will appear on your um, unit exams, your midterm, and of course your final. Uh, just to uh, uh, reiterate, I'm not sure if you've seen that in the notes, but the midterm and the final do not have written response. Uh, so they will have more, often more numerical responses to replace the fact that there are no written responses for the midterm and the final exam. So this particular one, again, it's the same diagram, so we don't have to go through that process again. But they're saying in the di uh, diagrammed neuron, which numbers represent the segment of the axon? that are respectively, and they bold respectively. What that means is, is that they want it in the, the answers in the same order as they appear in the question. So they're saying polarized, repolarized, and depolarized. Well, they already put that out in the same order for you, and they're asking you what numbers represent uh, polarized, repolarized, or depolarized. Now, this is a three-digit answer, so again, what I've talked about strategies with numerical response before, put your numbers right in the actual boxes provided here, and then make sure you transfer that on the bubble sheet pr uh, provided correctly. It is just three digits. You'd be surprised how many times it says maybe one digit, and I have people putting four, uh, four different um, digits on that bubble sheet. It just doesn't make sense. So pay attention to how many digits your answer needs to be. In this case, three digits. That's what you would transfer onto your bubble sheet. So, uh, easiest thing when you're taking a look at one, two, and three, remember what we call, uh, what we talked about in the teaching video. Anytime you see positives inside the neuron, or in this case, inside the axon of the neuron, we know that number two must be depolarization. Positives, and again, it's that sodium flooding in that creates the impulse. So, we know that Positives in the inside will indicate that that section of the axon is depolarized. So start with the easiest part first, right? Depolarized. Now, this is where the direction of the impulse is very important. It's going from left to right. That means where you have depolarization in front becomes number three. Uh, so this is in front of the impulse or depolarization. And this now becomes behind the impulse, our depolarization. And we can see that because of the direction of the impulse. So we know that in front has not been excited yet. It will get excited very shortly, but at this point it hasn't. So that makes number three unexcited, and unexcited neuron is called a polarized neuron, or a polarized section of the axon in this case. So that means that polarized would be three, which is in front of depolarization, in front of the impulse. Uh, behind now becomes number one. And we know that in, just like in that teaching video, once I've excited a part of the neuron, it's important that I get that back to repolarization, polarized, positives back on the outside. So that would make number one behind, and that would make number one repolarized. So again, just to reiterate, put your answer right in the sheet provided and then make sure that you transfer that sequence, correct sequence with the correct number of uh, digits onto your bubble sheet provided. And that, of course, would be three, one, two in this case. Really quickly, uh, if we change these reference points, that would change the direction of the impulse. So you might see next time, now this isn't the case here, but you might see this one being muscle next time and this one being central nervous system. That would change the impulse direction because we know that motor neurons take messages from the CNS to the muscle 
uh, to fulfill the appropriate response. Okay? And uh, I think that's it for this one. Uh, again, these are very difficult topics. So if you are struggling with this, please contact me and uh, we can spend some time going over this a little bit more. Uh, but if you uh, if you're okay, well, good luck on that. Uh, good luck on that unit exam and that midterm. Thanks.